another challenging commute with snow showers all across southeast Michigan, and some of these are fairly intense. We'll look at that and when the cold will finally bottom out. Karen? Breaking news, the man convicted of killing an Oakland County Sheriff's deputy has just been sentenced. You'll hear from the deputy's wife and the judge's decision. President Trump officially facing two articles of impeachment, the charges, the reaction, and what comes next? Paula. So this is Miss Viola. She is 101 years old, and she says she needs more volunteers to help out with Meals on Wheels. I'll explain. Local 4 News starts now with a breaking news alert. Good afternoon, I'm Karen Drew. Breaking news coming from Pontiac where the man responsible for running over a sheriff's deputy just got life in prison. Christopher Barak was behind the wheel running from police when he deliberately ran into Deputy Eric Overall on Thanksgiving morning back in 2017. Overall died. Last month, a jury found Barak guilty of murder during his sentencing. Overall's wife spoke out saying her life is forever changed by the crime. Our lives were cut short and it was not Eric's time to go. He had so much life still to live and love to give. We had so many plans and dreams for our future that will never be now. I should not have to talk about my husband in the past tense. We do have a crew at the Gore House right now and new at five you're going to hear from the late deputy's son who fought back tears and Barack's brief apology. Our coverage continues at five. Tragedy just weeks before Christmas, a one-year-old boy is killed in an early morning crash on eastbound I-94. This happened near the I-696 exit around six o'clock this morning. Please tell us a white van crashed into the back of a Ford Fusion with that little boy inside. Witnesses described hearing a loud crash and seeing debris and toys scattered across the freeway. It's so sad. Oh dear. I wish I wouldn't have come over to look at it. It breaks my heart. What a Christmas for those poor people. Michigan State Police are investigating. We'll have a live update on where the investigation stands tonight at 5. Sports betting is poised to become legal here in Michigan. This morning, a Senate panel approved passed the bills. The full state House and Senate are expected to also pass the bill soon. The resolution would legalize sports betting and online gaming by loosening restrictions placed on Detroit casinos, esports, and horse racing. The new tax revenue would pay for regulations, with the majority going to fund public schools. If you're not a fan of bitter cold, well, buckle up. We are still seeing some snow showers now, but those temperatures, oh, they're going to plunge. Let's bring in Ben with the latest. Yeah, it's a one-two punch, Karen. We'll talk about this, the cold coming up, but we saw the results of that horrible crash on 94 this morning. You really have got to keep your eyes peeled because visibility is dropping below a mile in some of these more intense snow showers. You can see there's a lot of light blue, but there's definitely some darker little bowling balls here, especially this little squall that's right now south of 94. And as it stays on its current track, we expect it to be right along that 23 corridor here, probably by the end of the show around 430. Uh, so that could cause some problems there. And we've got multiple other squalls that we're tracking throughout the evening. They'll s at least slow up a little bit going into the evening. We should see a little bit fewer of them by 8 o'clock, but we're going to see more tomorrow morning. And wait till you see the wind chills in the four zone forecast for tomorrow morning. That's coming up next. Karen. House Democrats took historic action today, announcing two articles of impeachment against President Donald Trump. Their weeks long investigation of his dealings with Ukraine have led to this moment and there is much more to come. Let's get to Devin Skillian. He's in the newsroom and Devin, this is a critical moment. It is indeed, Karen, a big moment. President Trump banking on a wall of Republican support to keep him in office down the road, but he is one of just now four American presidents to face impeachment increase. No president has ever been uh, removed from office. That didn't deter Democrats as they unveiled two articles of impeachment this morning, one accusing the president of abuse of power for soliciting foreign interference of the 2020 election. That count hinges on the claim the president asked Ukraine to launch an investigation of his political rival Joe Biden and his son Hunter. The president is also accused of obstruction of Congress for withholding documents and preventing key administration officials from testifying before Congress. Democrats say the looming 2020 election means these steps need to be taken now. The argument, why don't you just wait, amounts to this. 
Why don't you just let him cheat in one more election? Why not let him cheat just one more time? Why not let him have foreign help just one more time? So no, it is not difficult to defend this president because this president did nothing that's impeachable. It's hard to defend Democrats on how they're running this House and what they're doing inside their majority. That's the difficulty that I have. Well, now the House Judiciary Committee is expected to vote on those articles of impeachment by the end of the week. If they pass, they would go to the full House and then on to the U.S. Senate, where a trial would take place. Our coverage continues. More from Washington here coming up on Local 4 News at 5. Karen, back to you. All right. Thank you, Devin. Now, on the same day Democrats move to impeach the president, they're also revealing an agreement on a new trade deal with Canada and Mexico. House Speaker Nancy Pelosi says the new deal gives more protection to American workers and provides for stronger enforcement. Enforcement. Pelosi says that's a key part of the deal for Democrats, and it's a provision they work to make tougher. There is no question, of course, that this uh, uh, trade agreement is much better than NAFTA. But in terms of our work here, it is infinitely better than what was initially a pope, uh, proposed by the administration. The new trade deal is seen as a political victory for President Trump. On Twitter, he called it the most important trade deal ever and good for everybody. Pelosi says it is the right thing to do for the country's trade situation and American workers. A growing elderly population in Macomb County is leading to a volunteer crisis for Meals on Wheels. It's the biggest program of its kind in the state. And our Paula Tupman went for a ride with a volunteer and found a woman who's 101 years old and really worried about what happens if the program doesn't get some help. So this is really a numbers game. And so think about this. It's not that seniors won't get meals if they don't have volunteers. The bottom line is if there are no volunteers, they have to pay for those delivery services. But the more they have to pay, the fewer resources they have for the actual meals for these seniors. It's getting close to meal time and the well-oiled machinery of Macomb County Meals on Wheels is starting to turn. Today we are having minestrone soup. We are having ham and turkey cheese sub with an apple. There are more than 1,700 seniors in Macomb County who depend on Meals on Wheels. Viola is one of them, 101 years old, sharp of mind and worried about this program. Because they're so short of health. Uh, and uh, uh, Carolyn, she, she uh, comes every week. So we're going to go load up the car. Carolyn, a dedicated volunteer, is on her way. Can you pop the back? Good morning, bye. Carolyn, Meals on Wheels. Meals on Wheels. We're coming up, okay? I'm very grateful to the Meals on Wheels. I'm, uh, my age is... She's, way up there. And, she's 101. Uh, it, it's been a big help for me to stay in my apartment. It provides not only a well-balanced, ready-to-eat meal Monday through Friday, but it's that daily wellness check as well. Let me yeah. see. So it's somebody making sure that they're okay and that if they're not answering the door um, as an office, we follow up with them and their family to make sure they're okay. We have 110 routes that go out daily and we use volunteers that rotate through. Um, and really, at this point, we have a need for another 130 volunteers throughout Macomb County. At this very moment, the Meals on Wheels program of Macomb Community Action, a division of Health and Community Services, is itself in need of service of others. Volunteers for Meals on Wheels are desperately needed. If we had another 130 volunteers, we could probably pull a couple of trucks off the road, and that would be $60,000 a year. Drivers need a car, up-to-date insurance, a criminal background check, and a driving record check. And it is a small commitment, but who knows? You might even get a chance to meet Viola. Well, probably when people hear your story, they'll volunteer. Because who doesn't want to come and meet you, Viola? <laughs> All right. <laughs> Paula Tupman, Local 4. <laughs> I love that, Viola. You are a beautiful soul. Thank you, Paula. 
Still ahead, a new E. coli outbreak connected to salad. We're going to tell you how many people are sick and what you need to know about the specific product. Also, Dr. George in studio. Hey, Doc. Hey, Karen. You know, some of you may have noticed you have extra sniffles and itchy eyes this time of year. Well, in good health, I'm going to tell you about Christmas allergies. Yep, it's a real thing. How to cope when we come back. And later, new protection during an assault. How you can call for help even if you don't have your phone in your hands. And there's more. That's in Trending Stories. Stay with us.